Okay, okay. Okay, hello sa inyo. So, start tayo with our 6th no? lecture video for conceptual framework and accounting standards. So, start na tayo. So, ngayon, let's go to our next topic or our next standard which is PAS 27 which talks about separate financial statements. Now, itong PS27, you will be able to encounter this in, if I remember correctly, sa accounting for business combinations nyo. Right after the discussion sa consolidation. Oh, so, ano yan? Pape 7 nyo. Accounting for business combination. Add back to yan. So, dyan yung ma-encounter itong si separate financial statements. Now, itong si PS27, napakadaling standard nito. Simple lang kasi itong standard nito. So, anong learning objectives natin for this standard? Una, describe the applicability of PES 27. And second, describe the measurement basis allowed under PES 27. <coughs> so, ano, ma ano bang scope ni PES ng standard na to? Now, PES 27 does not mandate, so hindi siya nagpapakompel, ha? which entity should produce separate financial statements. Hindi siya nagkakompel. Walang mandate galing sa kanya. Pero, Take, of the sec take note of the second bullet point. An entity shall apply PES 27 in accounting for investment in subsidiaries, joint ventures, and associates when it elects or it is required by local regulations to present such separate FS. So, yun. So, tawag dito. <coughs> PES 27 na-apply siya dito kay investment in subsidiaries, kay joint ventures at sa mga ano, sa associates. Ngayon, there are two ways, or not to say two ways, but there are two methods, not to say two methods, but there are two instances yun. Tama. There are two instances when an entity will use PS27. Either, kapag gusto niya, when it elects, kapag bet niya lang, di ba? Or second, when the local regulations, when the regulatory body in which the in in a place where the where the entity is situated requires to do so na magpresent ng separate financial statements now sir <coughs> anong labot anong importansya ng PAS 27 dito tayo basahin mo natin to separate financial statements are those presented in addition to consolidated financial statements or in addition to financial statements in which investment associates or joint ventures are accounted for using the equity method. Separate financial statements need not to be appended to or accompany those statements. So, ganito ang importansya ni, ano, ni PS27. So, kasi kung makikita nyo dito, itong si investment in subsidiaries, itong si joint ventures, itong si associates, para siyang anak. Oo, ganito yung layman's, term, uh, layman's explanation yan. Para yan siyang anak. Anak yan siya. Which was produced because someone bigger, let's say the parents, decides to produce that anak. Ganyan yan. Like investment in subsidiaries. May tiyatawag tayong parent. Di ba? Explain natin to last time. Huh? Parent na kung saan pwede siyang magkaroon ng subsidiaries. Like yung Lopez Holdings. Di ba? Under sa kanya si Meralco. Under sa kanya si ABS-CBN. O parents, may mga subsidiaries siya. Ngayon, pag magpe-present ng financial statements class, ang nangyayari dyan, consolidated na yan. <coughs> Nakalagay dito, consolidated yan. What do you mean consolidated? Kinocombine yan, iniisahan na lang para isa na lang yung presentation. So, yung mga FS niya, no? Ng mga subsidiaries na to, oo, in, in, in terms of investment in subsidiaries, yung mga FS nila, binibigay nila yan kay parent para si parent, i-combine yan, i-consolidate niya. Para ang pag-present, iisa na lang. Ganyan nangyari sa consolidated financial statement. Now, here comes PS27. Bakit? What if ang gusto lang ni user, like for example, regulatory body siya, ang gusto lang makita ni user is kung ano yung separate performance ng subsidiary na to. Kung yun lang, yun lang gusto niya makita, hindi yung consolidated. May particular gusto siyang makita, itong si subsidiary. Or itong si subsidiary, kung anong performance siya, ano yung kanyang FS. Yeah, ganun. Or for example, yes, parent, marami kang anak. Pero gusto mo lang makita yung performance ng anak na to. Ito lang yung gusto makita. 
So, pag titing namin consolidated, mahihirapan ka. Kasi yung consolidated, combined na yan, mahihirapan kang i-trace which amounts from those consolidated FS ang galing sa particular entity na to. Oo, mahirapan ka. Consolidated yan. Kinumbay na yung lahat yan. Mix-mix na yan. So, mahirapan kang i-trace. So, here comes, ito na si PS27. Kung saan, when the entity elects or when it is required by the regulatory body, yung anak, eto, itong si subsidiary, yung anak, yung joint venture, yung associate, they can present a separate financial statements for their own. Sa kanya lang. Sa kanya lang. Sa kanila lang. Sa kanila lang. Sa kanila lang. Oo. Anong usage yan? Ulitin natin. Kasi pag kinoconsolidate yan, minimix, kinoconsolidate yan papunta kay parent, nagmimix-mix na yan eh. Kinocombine na. So, mahirapan ng i-trace which amounts, which transactions pertains to This particular entity, particular subsidiary, particular joint ventures, particular associates. So, so to make things easier, magpapresenta lang sila na sarili nilang separate FS para pakita na, oh, ito lang yung transactions na pertaining to us. Ito lang yung transaction pertaining to us. O, mas madali ang buhay kasi hindi mo na kailangang i-trace pa doon sa combined consolidated FS. Papakita na lang sa yung separate. Yeah? Padaliin natin yung buhay para kay users. So, yun yung labot ni separate FS. Padaliin yung buhay. So, preparation of financial statements. <coughs> separate FS shall be prepared in accordance with all applicable PFRS except as follows. Investment subsidiaries, associates, and joint ventures are counted for in separate statements either. At cost, in accordance with PFRS 9, financial instruments, or using the equity method. Excuse me po. The entity shall apply the same accounting for each category of investment. So, yan, ganyan lang kadali si separate FS. Kahit nga yung ano namin, yung, yung pag-discuss ko dyan sa, ano eh, sa topic na yan, under accounting for business combination sa mga third year senpai nyo. Wala lang. Easy lang yan si separate FS. So, puna tayo dito. According to PS27, investment subsidiaries, associates, or joint ventures are accounted for in the separate financial statements. At cost ba? In accordance with PFRS 9? Using the equity method under PS28, investment in associates and joint ventures or letter D, any of these as a matter of accounting policy choice. And dito naman yan eh. Hmm? So, the answer here is letter D. So, yan. Napakadali lang. Isang question lang. Isang question lang ato sana eh. Sa book ni Zeus. So, with that, let's go to our next topic. So, hello, hello. Dito to ngayon sa next discussion natin or next topic which is Investment in Associates and Joint Ventures under PS28. Now, if ever ninyo pa ito na pagdaanan, kasi sa mga first part to siya eh, uh, this is under Intermediate Accounting Part 1. O, sa assets to siya, dinidiscuss. The first sapata ng ano, discussion nyo, Investment Associates yan. And Joint Ventures. So, ano bang learning objectives natin para dito? So, una is to define daw what is an investment in associate. And pangalawa, describe the accounting requirements for investment in associates and joint ventures. Boy, napunta sa end. Yun. So, definition of terms muna tayo mga kapatid. Associate. Itong pinag-usapan natin eh. Investment in associate. An entity including, ano nga ba itong associate? An entity including an unincorporated entity such as a partnership over which Itong entity na to, may investor, and that investor has significant influence over that entity. This investor has significant influence. Investor. Significant influence over the entity. Yan basically ang isang investment in associate. Si investor, may significant influence kay entity. Now, what is significant influence? Now, according to PS28, significant influence is the power to participate. The power to participate saan? Sa financial and operating policy decisions of the investee. The power to participate in the financial and operating policy decisions ng investee niya. So, si investor, because of his significant influence over the, in the entity, the investee, may power to participate siya. But take note, it is not control or joint control over those policy. It is not control or joint control over those policy. Significant influence lang. Bakit yan mahalaga ang distinction na yan? Malalaman nyo later on. So, ito significant influence. Uh, significant influence is presumed to exist if the investor holds 
directly or indirectly through subsidiaries, 20% or more of the voting power, meaning ordinary shares. Kasi di ba ang preference shares, wala siyang voting power. So take note, tandaan nyo, kasi may mga tricky questions yan eh. Sasabihin nito, oh, 30% ownership of shares, tapos yung shares pala, preference, aba, hindi ganun. Hindi yung pwede maging significant influence because as we know, preference shares, wala yung voting power. Ang may voting power lang is yung ordinary shares. So yan. At, ah, take note lang yun doon. Kasi may mga tricky, tricky questions yan. Sabihin dyan, 25% ang kanyang ownership. Yun pala, pe, preference shares. So walang significant influence doon. Kasi required na yung shares may voting power. And ano lang ba ang shares na may voting power? Yung ordinary shares. So take note, ordinary shares ang nire-refer dito sa voting power. Pero basta, basta yung share may voting power, yun lang yung tandaan nyo. 20% or more of the voting power of the investee. Yun. Yun is, uh, so dapat, si investor merong holdings. Ibig sabihin, the investor holds 20% or more of the voting power. Meaning, 20% or more ng shares na may voting power over the investee. Now, there are instances where hindi naabot yung 20% requirement. So, automatic ba na wala ng significant influence? Depende. Oo, depende yan. Kasi, unless it can be clearly demonstrated that this is not the case. So, kahit na 19-18% lang yung ano niya, yung ownership niya over the shares with voting powers, pero it can be clearly demonstrated that the entity, the investor, still has significant influence over the investee, then you can still say na may investment and associate dyan. Oo, kahit hindi na-reach yung 20%, pero it can be clearly demonstrated that there is significant influence, then you can say na may investment associate pa rin dyan. Applicable pa rin si PES 28. Napapaano natin malalaman? Ito, provided naman. Oo, the following may provide evidence of significant influence kahit na yung 20% is not achieved. Oo, is less than, no? yung ownership interest over the voting powers is less than 20%. So, yun, no? So, kahit hindi ma-reach, ulitin natin, kahit hindi ma-reach yung 20% threshold, pero it can be clearly demonstrated that there's a significant influence. Si investor over ka investi, just as the following, then you can still say na applicable pa rin si PES 28. Ano-ano yung mga examples na yan? Ito naman, provided eh. Una, representation on the board of directors or equivalent governing body of the investi. So, may representation ka doon. So, ibig sabihin, you can still influence the decision of the board eh. Kasi basically, yung board yung namamahala over the company. Pangalawa, participation in policy making process. Including participation in decisions about dividends or other distributions. So, sa board pa rin yan. Pangalat, pangatlo, material transactions between the investor and the investee. Like for example, yes, you have 18% ownership over the investee. Si investor may 80% voting uh, ownership interest with voting power over kay investee. Pero itong si investor, siya pala yung primary supplier ni investee ng kanyang raw materials. O oh, ganun, no? material transactions between the investor and investee. So it turns out that this investor is the primary supplier of the raw materials na ginagamit ni investee sa kanyang Operation. So in that case, kahit na hindi na-reach yung 20% threshold, pero may material transaction between the investor and investee, then you can see say that there's a significant influence. Ito, interchange of managerial personnel, and provisions of essential technical information. So, ulitin na natin, if yung 20% threshold hindi na-reach, huwag, huwag nyo agad sabihin na walang significant influence. Tingnan nyo muna if itong mga to, at least one sa kanila is present. Then pag present, eh di, you can surely say na may significant influence na applicable pa rin si PAS 28. So yan ha, take note. Oh. General rule, 20% or more. Pero pag hindi naabot yung threshold na 20%, ulitin lang natin. But it can be clearly demonstrated na may significant influence as the following. Then you can still apply PS 28. Ngayon, na-determine mo na. Na you can apply PS28 in this particular case. Ano nang gagawin mo next? Eh di account mo na. Paano? Under the equity method. 
So, investment and associates or joint ventures are accounted for using the equity method. Now, paano to siya? Under this method daw, the investment is initially recognized at cost. So, magkano na gasos mo? Parang ganun. At cost. Then, yung subsequent measurement niya, o, di ba? Initial measurement is at cost. Then, the subsequent measurement, the subsequent measurement adjusted for the investor's share in the changes in the equity of the investee. In the changes in the equity, in the equity of the investee. So, meaning yan, yung subsequent measurement mo under the equity method is kung ano yung mga transactions that affects the equity of the investee. Yun yung magkakaroon ng effect sa iyong investment in associate or joint ventures. Ulitin na natin, initial measurement at cost. Subsequent measurement, paano madedetermine? Those transactions that have an effect over the investee's equity magkakaroon yun ng effect sa iyong investment. Ganun kasimple. Parang ganito sa table na to. Share in associates. Oh, share in associates. So, parang ang gagawin mo dyan, gagawa ka ng ano eh, gagawa ka ng T-account. Tapos lagyan mo dito, investment mo kay associate, di ba? Tapos ang nilagay mo unang amount dito, beginning balance yung cost mo. Then, ang mangyayari for the for the reporting period, tingnan mo ano mga naging changes kay or mga transactions that affects the equity ni invest mo. So dito beginning balance mo kung magkano ang ginastos mo. So tingnan mo, share in associates, profit or loss. Increase or share, increase for share in po. Kung nagkaroon ng profit, increase mo dito. Nagkaroon ng loss, o decrease mo dito kasi ang normal balance ng investment associates and joint ventures is Since that is an investment, that is an asset, so normal balance is debit, di ba? So, pag nagkaroon ng increase sa profit, o oh, increase ang share mo dyan. Kasi why? Profit or loss affects the equity ni investi. Kasi nagiging income summary yan. Eh, na income summary sa natin kinoclose. Sa retained earnings. Saan located ang retained earnings? Sa equity. Di ba? Sa owner's equity. So, that transaction, profit or loss, affects the equity of the investi. Hence, it affects your investment over the investi. Di ba? Ganun. Equity method. So, yun, no? increase in share, that is, uh, increases the equity of the entity, which also increases your investment over the investee. Decrease naman, which is the loss, oh, bawasan sa'yo. Dividends, bawasan sa'yo. Other comprehensive income, increase, di ba? Sa statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income yan, di ba? Aswan yan sila. So, pag nagkaroon ng OCI increase, OCI decrease, Okay. Simple lang, di ba? Ito namang investment income. May mga certain questions yan. Tatanungin sa inyo. Magkano ang investment income mo? Ganon-ganon. So, just take, uh, take, a look, take a look at this na lang, di ba? Increase or share, yun, nilalagay nyo. Or kung may decrease man yan, eh di ba mas negative? Ang dividends, walang effect yan. Ngayon, ang OCI, walang effect rin. However, the share in the OCI is included in the investor's OCI. So, basically, yung investment income mo, ito lang. O, oh, yan lang. O, oh, di ba? Napakasimple. Just follow the table. Follow the table, 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 follow the table. Yan lang. O, oh, di ba? Simple. Ngayon, may certain issue tayo. Ano yun? Itong preference share. Now, a little recap. Ano ba nga? Ang, ano ba tong Tawag dito, ano ba tong nature ni preference share? Now, di ba nasabi ko kanina, in-emphasize ko, na tinitingnan lang natin when we're talking about ownership in a significant influence, yung voting power. Anong share ang may voting power? Ordinary shares. Kasi ang preference share usually wala yan eh. So, anong issue nito when it comes to ah, uh, in this particular standard. Ganito kasi yan. Ito, madidiscuss pa inyo sa inyo. Itong topic na ito, madidiscuss pa sa inyo in Intermediate Accounting Part 2 under Equity Section kung saan distribution of dividends na. Oo. Ngayon, pero lalo na yung mga nag-ABM sa inyo, I'm sure may idea na kayo about ito. Pero ganito yan siya. There's a reason why it is called preference share. There's a reason why it is called a preference share. Preferred siya. Preferred saan? In certain instances, preferred siya. 
For example, pag nagkaroon ng distribution of dividends, preference share yung inuuna. Kasi nga, prefer preferred siya eh, from the name itself. Another one, pag nagkaroon ng liquidation ng company, magsasara na yung company. Yung unang makakareceive ng share nila, yung liquidating shares, liquidating ano, ni company, preference share rin. Kumbaga, si ordinary shares, residual lang yung nare-receive niya. Kung ano yung matira, edi kay ordinary shares mapupunta. Yun yung reason. So, example, for example, ganito ang ano yan eh, 1 million o 100 pesos, tapos yung preference share yung napag-usapan, 50, um, say like so, 10%, 10 sa kanila, so, 10% per 100 is 10. So, ito mapupunta kay preference share. Ngayon, kung may residual yan, ito simple yung explanation lang. Yung residual yan, yung residual yan, kay ordinary shares na mapupunta. Ganyan ang nature ng preference share and ordinary shares in ordinary terms. Ngayon, let's, for, let's say for example, ang napag-usapan nila, additional examples lang para mas maintindihan, is 10 pesos automatic mapupunta kay preference share. Ganon ang usapan nila. Now, paano if 10 pesos lang sakto yung income? Eh di yung buong 10 pesos mapupunta kay preference share, kay residual, wala siyang mapupunta, walang mapupunta sa kanya. Uh, kay ordinary shares, walang mapupunta sa kanya. Bakit? Kasi si ordinary shares, residual lang na re-receive niyan. Kung may matira, eh di good for them, may marireceive sila. Eh kapag wala, eh di bad for them. Kasi residual yung nature ng marireceive nila eh. Kung ano yung matira, after distributing sa preference, Yun yung sa kanila. In this case, ang napag-usapan, 10 pesos yung kay preference from the income. E saktong 10, pe 10 pesos lang yung income. Nga? Saktong 10 pesos lang yung income. So, wala mapupunta kay ordinary shares. Etong sa taas, okay, good for the ordinary share. Kasi, 10 pesos lang yung kaya, no? or preference share. So, may residual pang 90. So, may marireceive si ordinary shares. Ganyan yung nature of distribution ng dividends. So, yan. Pero may mga complexities pa yan pagdating nyo ng ano, intermediate accounting part 2. Pero ganyan yung simple explanation yan. So yan na. Ngayon, na-establish na yung ganyang ano, concept. Ngayon, anong issue dyan? So ano yung pointer? Preferences issued by an associate. So ito. If an associate has outstanding preference shares that are held by parties other than the investor, the investor computes its share of profit or loss after making the following adjustment. After making the following adjustment. So, pag preference share is cumulative, ibig sabihin may patungan yan, did, deduct one year dividend whether declared or not before computing an associate's profit or loss ito mas mapafamiliarize kayo dito pagdating nyo ng ano, intermediate accounting part 2 pero ganyan yung kasimple preference is cumulative deduct one year ang cumulative ibig sabihin kapag may arrears may example for the last 5 years or let's say for the last 2 years walang declaration of dividends ngayon yung preference share nyo is cumulative meaning Yung last two years na walang declaration of dividends, i-accumulate yan. Isasama yan sa computation ng dividends na marireceive mo. Kaya siya cumulative. Oo. Kapag, ang tawag yan, arrears. Dividends in arrears. Walang declaration for two years. So, yung two years na yun, isasama sa computation. Oo. Kasi cumulative yung preference share. Ngayon, pag non-cumulative yung preference share, ang problema dyan, Pag, kahit na may ano, arrears pero non-cumulative siya, walang effect for the current year lang. Ganyan lang. Pero intermediate accounting part to yun yan. So, ito lang. Preference is cumulative. Ang gagawin mo, pag preference is cumulative preference siya, deduct one year dividend whether declared or not before computing in associates profit or loss. Ito, pag preference is non-cumulative, deduct dividends only when declared before computing siya in associate Profit or loss, kapag yung preference is redeemable, no dividend deducted when computing share in associates or profit or loss. Bakit sir? Ano ba yung redeemable preference share? If, baka na-mention naman to sa inyo, pero recap lang. Si, etong redeemable preference share, hindi to talaga siya equity. Hindi siya talaga share. Oo, hindi siya, hindi siya equity. 
ano siya? Liability and class. Liability ang redeemable preference share. Tatandaan nyo, ang redeemable preference share, it is a liability. It is not an equity. Yan lang yung pinangalan sa kanya. Tandaan nyo, redeemable preference share is a liability. Bakit? Kasi, uh, other note lang to. Ang nature kasi ang redeemable preference share, ikaw ang entity, oh, ikaw si entity, to si investor, siyempre, bigyan mo siya ng redeemable preference share. However, since it is redeemable, pwede yung bawiin. Oo. Parang, binigyan mo lang siya ng collateral para bigyan ka niya ng utang. Ngayon, pag redeemable na siya, pag redeemable ba siya, eh di isa sa uli niya na yung, ano, yung shares, ibabalik mo na rin yung kanyang parang pinautang, yung kanyang pera. O, sa para sang liability, yung nature ni, preferen ni redeemable preference share. So, additional note lang. So, ito, napag-usapan na may effect ang preference share sa computation mo ng profit or loss kay associate. Bakit? Kasi typically kasi, let's say for example, 25% yung ownership mo sa uh, yung uh, oh, 25% interest. Ownership interest, meron ka kay associate. So kapag nagkaroon ng 1 million income si associate, times 25% dyan, sa'yo yan. Oo, so 250. 250. Ngayon, if there's an existence of a preference share, that are held by parties other than the investor, hindi na magiging ganito yung competition mo. Hindi na magiging ganyan yung competition mo. Parang magiging ganito na. Oo. Kasi yung 1 million peso or 1, ano, unahin mo munang kunin yung babawasan mo muna yung share ni preference share over that. Kung ano yung matira, yan na yung imumultiply mo ng yung 25%. Yan. Ito yung ordinary. Pag walang preference share. 1 million pesos yung ano, profit or loss times 25%. Okay, goods, 250 sa'yo. Pero kapag may preference share, o oh, edi, 1, yung 1,000 million mo, bawa, ibawas mo muna dyan, ididak mo muna yung share ng preference share dyan. Then, kung ano yung matira, residual, di ba? Kasi meron kang voting power, ordinary share yan. So, yung kung anong residual, doon mo, mo multiply yung 25% interest mo para makuha mo yung share mo sa associates profit or loss. So, paano malalaman itong preference share? Naka di nakalagay dito. Oh. Kapag cumulative, deduct one year. Ito, deduct only when dividends are declared. Pag redeemable, huwag mong pansinin. Ganun. May example naman yung tema maya. So, ganyan yung nature. Napabata explanation. Pero, take note of that nature pag may preference share. Ayan, let's go to the next slide. Discontinuance of the use of the equity method. An investor starts to apply the equity method on the date it obtains significant influence. So, pag January 1 obtains significant influence, then that's the time that you will apply equity method. Then, ceases to apply such equity method at the date that it loss, loses significant influence. So, kung kailan nag-start yung mag-obtain ka significant influence, then that's the date that you will start to apply equity method. Kung kailan nag-cease yung significant influence, then don't, that's the time that you will cease using the equity method. Ganun ka simple. On the loss of significant influence, the investor shall measure at fair value any investment the investor retains in the former associate. The investor shall recognize in profit or loss any difference between the ito, additional notes lang. Oh, the, inve the investor shall measure at fair value any investment the investor retains in the former associate. So, fair value na lang. The investor shall recognize in profit or loss any difference between the what? The fair value of any retained investment and any proceeds na nanggaling from disposing of the part interest in the associate and ato, so difference nito ni A and B. So yung pangalawa is the carrying amount of the investment at the date when significant influence is lost. So kung anong difference yung dalawa, profit or loss. Ngayon ito. Siyempre, classification of retained interest. Classification of retained interest. 
Following the discontinuance of equity method, the retained interest shall be classified as follows. So, ganito ang, ano dyan, ang interpretation ng concept dyan. Let's say for example, ito yan ah. Let's say, meron kang 25% interest voting with voting power. So, may significant influence ka over kay entity. Ngayon, nagkaroon ng changes whether, ano, either binawasan mo yung ownership interest mo or dinagdagan which qualified it to magkaroon ng change sa ano, accounting standard na yung ginagamit. Anong mangyayari? Tinatawag, yan yung loss of significant influence. Loss of significant influence. Dalawa ang pwedeng mangyari dyan. And take note, it is retained. Ah. Retained. Hindi big sabihin, uh, it, does not, uh, it does not mean na nawala na lahat. Na. May na-retain pa rin. Meron ka pa rin ownership. Meron ka pa rin interest over the investee. However, nagkaroon na lang change of classification. Hindi na siya investment and associate or joint ventures. Hindi na siya significant influence. Hence, that phrase, loss of significant influence. So, may retained interest ka pa rin. However, nagkaroon lang ng change in classification, which will mean either sa dalawang to. Ito na yung sinasabi natin. Either nagkaroon ng increase of ownership above 50% or decrease in ownership less than 20%. Pababa. Paano to? Uh, ganito. Yun. So, ganito yan ha. So, ibig sabihin, itong sa decrease of ownership below 20%, below 20%, PFRS na yan, yan, financial instruments na yan, financial instruments na yan, financial asset at fair value under PFRS 9. PFRS 9 is financial instrument. So, pag nagkaroon ng decrease of ownership in interest, pero may retained interest ka pa rin, nag-decrease lang, kasi na, oh, nagka ng, nagkaroon ng loss of significant influence, then you will now classify that as under PFRS 9 financial instrument. Now, on the other hand, kapag nagkaroon ng increase in ownership, tapos yung ownership mo naging more than 50%, more, tandaan nyo, more than ang sabi ko, hindi more than and equal to, ha? more than 50%, ibig sabihin, it is now classified under PFRS 3 and PFRS 10. PFRS 3 is business combination, so accounting for business combination yan, add back to yan. PFRS 10 is Consolidated Financial Statement. So, add back to rin yan. Accounting for Business Combination. Sir, no? So, anong difference yan, sir? Anong labot yan? Ito na yung hierarchy of ownership interest. O, hierarchy na to siya of ownership interest. Yung pinakamataas, which is the 50% and above. Oh, which is, paano to? Uh, yun, no? Greater than. Greater than 50%. Hierarchy to siya. Hierarchy to siya. Yung pinakamataas itong investment in subsidiary tawag dito. Investment in subsidiary. Ito. Yan yung pinakamataas. Kasi dyan, ang concept dyan, the investor has control over the investee. Yan yung parent-subsidiary relationship na pinag-usapan natin last time. Parent-subsidiary relationship. Sa mga previous video natin. Na kung saan itong si parent, he has control, ha? Control over the investee. Because yung ownership interest niya, take note, voting power to, yung ownership interest niya is more than 50%. Eh kapag, sama, di ba, sa mga decisions yan, the majority wins. Kung ano yung will ng majority, yun yung mas masunod. Eh sa voting, o di ba? More than 50% yung ownership mo. So kung, kung magkakaroon ng voting, Yung kung ano yung gusto mo, yung masusunod. Yeah? Kasi more than 50% ang ownership interest mo eh. Na may voting power. So yan. That what, that's what defined invest in subsidiary. May control ka over the investee. Yung second level dyan is this one. si Investment in associate and joint ventures. Oo. Kasi kung ito, control, ikaw, Significant influence lang. Significant influence lang. Kasi, it is between 20%, uh, 20 to 40, uh, to, let's say, you know, 50%. Kasi ito, more than 50. So, don't forget your al simple algebra. So, 20% to 50%. Kasi, ano lang eh, significant, ano lang eh. 
kasi ang control dapat more than 50%. So, mga, let's say ganyan. So, yan. Wala kang control. Oh, kasi control kung anong gusto mo. What you will is ano eh. Yun ang masusunod. Pagdating sa significant influence, influence lang. Significant lang. Oo. Significant influence lang. Yung ma-persuade mo ba? Oo. Parang sa kaibigan mo. Hindi mo nga sa kontrolado pero ma-persuade mo. May influence ka over that person. Di ba? Significant influence. Now, the, the lower level of the investment associate significant influence is ito ng si PFRS9. Oo. PFRS9 na yan. Financial instruments. Kasi, in that case, wala kang control, wala kang significant influence, you're just a simple investor. You're just a simple investor. Yan yung lowest level. Then, may tinatawag rin tayong joint control. Sa joint arrangement na yan siya, yun may separate, ano yun, may sariling mundo yun siya. Parang ganito yun siya eh. Dalawa kayo, then nag-decide kayo na mag-ano ng isang operations yan. One, two, tapos nag-create kayo na mag-joint, joint ano lang kayo, joint arrangement. Yun yung other, ano, other. So, apat yan sila. Ito, ito, sa advoc, ah, uh, sa in accounting for business combination to sa in uh, matuto si investment ano etong si significant influence sa IA1 etong PFRS9 sa IA sa IA2 o kasi under ata to sa oh, under to sa equity sa equity section etong si joint arrangement advoc advoc 1 advoc 1 accounting for special transaction so apat na level of hierarchy yan or oh, apat na level let's say Pinakamata si joint si investment subsidiary, second sa kanya is si ito si investment associate PS28. Yung next sa kanya is si ano, yung sa baba niya is si PFRS9. Then itong si joint arrangements, may sariling mundo to siya kasi yung sa kanya two or more entities nag-decide na mag joint operations, ganun. Pero don't worry. Uh, parang ano lang to sa inyo eh, parang introduction lang para pag na tackle niyo na to for an in-depth discussion, at least may idea na kayo. So, ito, additional note, uh, reclassification of cumulative OCI. Cumulative OCI. Naumoy ko na ulam namin. So, if an investor lose a significant influence over an associate, all amounts recognized in other comprehensive income in relation to the associate shall be accounted on the same basis as would be required if the associate had directly disposed of the related assets or liabilities. Saan pa? Share in losses of associate. Ito. Ito yung sa discussion natin. Ah, may, ka, pag may similarity to sa discussion sa impairment losses. Yung oh, yan, impairment losses pati sa LCNRV. Parang ganon. May similar concept sila. sila. Pero ganito yan. So, ito. Share in losses of associate. So, may mga instances talaga na yung si associate mo, investor ka, yung associate mo, na hindi puro profit yan. May, baka may mga instances na losses yung ma-accumulate yan. Di ba? Kasi, di ba, kung balikan natin to, oh, pag mag-compute ka, oh, profit or loss, so oh, pag-loss, sa profit or loss and OCI mo, so, decrease yan sa investment mo. Sa investment mo kay associate, di ba? So, may mga instances talaga na loss talaga yung mangyayari. Now, what will happen in that case? So, if, if an investor's share of losses of an associate equals or exceeds its interest in the associate, the investor discontinues recognizing its share of further losses. So, paano yan? Ang, ang, let's check for example, Ah, uh, yung investment yung investment mo kay associate as of now is 100k. Ah, let's say yan na yung natitira mo. Yan na yung beginning balance mo for the current period sa investment associate account mo of 100k na lang. Ngayon itong si associate mo. Ah, uh, let's and let's say for example that's 20%. Okay, 20% yung ano mo. Yung holdings mo sa kanya. Ngayon itong si associate Niyan si associate nag-incur ng 1 million losses. Nag-incur ng 1 million losses. Eh 20% yung holdings mo diyan. So 20% times 1 million, ilan 'yan? 200,000. 200,000 loss. So yung 200k loss mapupunta yan sa iyong investment in associate account. 
So, 100 dyan, 200 to, aba, Diyos ko, posible yung mangyari. Like, for example, for the ano, sunod-sunod na year, pu puro losses si associate. So, mag-accumulate yan, di ba? Magbabawas-bawas yan yung investment mo sa kanya. Yung value ng investment mo sa kanya. Until na, the, ano, the losses exceeds or equals the interest in the associate. So, for example, ganito. For example, ganito, 100K na lang. After years of losses, for the current year, 100K na lang yung, yung investment kay associate. Pero hindi ka pa nag-withdraw. Mark year ka. Baka ganun. Diba? Hindi ka pa nag-withdraw. So, for the current year, naging care naman siya ng additional 1 million doses. So, yung share mo dyan, 20%, 200K na. In that case, the losses exceeds the interest in the associate. Kasi yung losses mo is 200K. 100K na lang yung in interest mo kay associate. So, in that case, the investor, the investor discontinues recognizing its share of further losses. So, mag-discontinue ka na. O, oh, kasi, ano, negative, negative, negative. Ah, ba, Diyos ko. Mala, pangit ang investment mo dyan, kapatid. So, ito, dito tayo. Interest in the associate includes the following. So, ito yung mga interest mo kay associate. Investment in associate measured under equity method. Investment in preference share of the associate. Unsecured long-term receivable loans. So, take note, ha? Take note. Itong interest na pinipertain dito, it does not only mean the ones that are measured under equity method. It also pertains to these three. Itong tatlo. So, i-co-combine mo yan sila. Investment associate and measured under equity method. Investment in preference share of the associate. And unsecured long-term receivable loan. So, yan ang pinapertain dyan when it talking about the interest in the associate. Kasi tinitingnan ito, yung interest mo kay associate. Anong meron ka kay associate? Yeah? So, ito sila. Yung under equity method, yung pre preference share, and yung unsecured long-term receivable or loan. So, ito mga separate questions to siya. Ito naman, ito yung mga interest in the associate does not include, no? does not include the following. Trade receivables and payables and secured long-term receivables or loan. So, take note of that lang. So, ulitin natin. If an investor shares, if an investor share of losses of an associate equals or exceeds its interest in the associate. So, may mga questions yan. Like, ito yung investment associate mo. Like, see, for example, 100K. Tapos yung preference mo, 50K. Unsecured long-term mo is 50K din. Tapos yung losses, like for example, 200K. So, i-add mo to. So, it equals na. Di ba? So, may mga, oh, may mga separate questions yung ganyan. Pero pagdating sa board exam, hindi naman yung gagawin lalabas. Eh, kasi hindi naman yung labot ng investment associate. Ang labot talaga yung investment associate is, ito talaga yung labot niya. Mm -mm. Pero this is to take note lang. Share in losses in the associate. So, share in losses of associate continuation. Ngayon, ito naman. After the investor's interest in the associate is reduced to zero, additional losses are provided for. Ibig sabihin, lumampas na eh. Kailangan, may, uh, zero na nga yung interest mo kay associate eh. Nag-zero out na to silang tatlo. After the losses. Tapos, meron pang dagdagdag na additional losses. So, additional losses are provided for and a liability is recognized only to the extent that the investor has incurred legal or constructive obligations or made payments on behalf of the associate. So, ano meaning yan, sir? Gaya na sabi natin, nag-zero out na. Nag-zero out na. Nag-zero out na. Huh? Yan ulit yan. Nag-zero out na. Nag-zero out na. Nag-zero out na. Kasi oh, the investor discontinues recognizing its share of further losses. So, hindi ka pwede malagay dyan ng negative losses, 500 losses, gano'n. Hindi pwede yun. So, take note. Interest mo, itong total lang tatlo. Tapos, nag-zero out na. Oo. Discontinue to recognize na. However, when the investor has legal or constructive obligations para kay associate or has made payments on behalf of the associate, then yung further losses na yun, yung nag-exceed, will be recognized as liability. Okay? Take note. Kasi ito, ito ang general rule. Pag nag ano, na, equals or exceeds na the interest in the associate, discontinue na. Oo. 
However, if the investor has incurred legal or constructive obligation on behalf of the associate or has made payments on behalf of the associate, big sabihin parang naging guarantor si investor dito. Oh, parang ganoon naging garang guarantor siya. Example 'yun. So in that case, then yung additional losses na 'yan, i-recognize mo na as liability. Oo, i-recognize mo na as liability. Pag, ha, pag present to sila, ha, pag present to sila. Pero pag hindi present, then wag mo i-recognize yung additional losses. Etya, uh, snub mo lang. Pero kapag meron kang legal constructive obligation, kapag meron kang made payments on behalf of the associate, then recognize mo as additional liabilities yung additional losses. Okay? Any other losses not recognized? If the associate subsequently, ito naman. If the associate subsequently reports profits, Ibig sabihin, nakabawi na sa associate mo. So, instead of losses na, profits na ang kanyang na kukuha. Ano mangyayari next? The investor resumes recognizing its share of those profits only after its share of the profit equals the share of losses not recognized. Equals the share of pro losses not recognized. So, so, let's say, for example, 2,000, no, nag-zero out na yung Nag-zero out na yung ano yung ano mo kay ano kay yung interest mo kay associate no nag-zero out na tapos nagkaroon pa ng additional losses of 200,000 pesos so times mo 20% that's around 40 40k ngayon pagka next year si associate nagano na ng profits so before ka mag-recognize ng share mo sa profits na yon itapal mo muna yung Losses not recognized. In this case, the 40K. O, itapal mo muna. Oo. Mag-ibigyan mo muna. Itapal mo muna yun bago ka mag-recognize ng profits. Ha? Itapal mo muna. Oo, mag-allocate ka muna para ipang-tapal doon sa unrecognized losses bago ka mag-recognize ng profit. So, take note of that lang. So, with that, application of concepts tayo. Ito. On January 1, 2001, Entity. A acquires 30% interest kay Entity B. So, si Entity A yung investor, si Entity B yung investee. So, acquires 30% interest. So, masasabi natin ano yan? Uh, tag dito? Masasabi natin tag dito? Uh, ano tawag sa shares na yun? Ordinary shares yan. Kasi wala naman sinabi preference eh. May rapia sumang preference share kasi dapat sa ordinary yan. So, acquires 30% interest kay Entity B for 600,000. Entity B reports profits of 200,000 and declares dividends of 50,000 in 2001. How much is the carrying amount of the investment in associate on December 1, 31,2001? Saan ang calculator na? Hmm? Saan ang calculator? So, yan na. Investment associate tayo with 30% interest. So, ang maganda sa ano, investment associate, ang pag-compute niyan, t-account lang. So yung, di ba? Anong initial recognition ng investment ng equity method to? So anong initial ano, recognition at cost, di ba? At cost. So 600,000. Ngayon, yung subsequent measurement is equity method. What do you mean by equity method? Those transactions that affects the equity of the investee, yun yung magkakaroon ng effect sa investment mo. In this case, the profit of 200,000 kasi di ba ulitin natin saan kinoclose ang profit or loss or yung ano mo income mo sa income summary saan kinoclose ang income summary sa retained earnings saan located ang retained earnings sa equity so that profit affects the equity of the associate which means it will also affect your investment so 200,000 And the dividends of, yan, dividends in. Ang dividends, pag nagdi-declare ka ng dividends, pag nagdi-declare ka ng dividends, anong ginagamit mo? Di ba? Kumukuha ka sa retained earnings. Eh, saan located ang retained earnings? Binabawasan mong retained earnings. Saan located ang retained earnings? Sa equity mo. So, that is a transaction that also affects the equity of the associate, which in turn affects your investment. So, 200K. 200K. And 30% yung iyong, Tawag dito, 20, 30% yung iyong interest. So, 
times 0.3, that's 60. So, sana yung arrow? Oy, nawala yun. So, 60k yan. Then, di ba, sabi natin, balikan natin to. O? Oh, ang profit increase, dividends decrease. So, ang dividends is 50k times 30%, 15. So, in the end, it doesn't even matter. Cry so hard and get so far. 6.45 ang ating answer dito. So, 6.45k. Mas simple lang. So, itong answer. Uh, diba? Ngayon, ito. Entity A uses the equity method in accounting for its 20% interest in Entity B. Okay, 20% equity method. Okay. So, simple lang. Pero may papahirap siya dito. Pampahirap. So, si Entity B reports profit of 4 million for the period. So, yan. 4 million. Automatic ba? Yung 4 million times mga agad sa 20%? Hindi muna. Kasi may remaining parts pa ng problem. Ano yun? Entity B house. Entity B house. Entity B has outstanding 5% cumulative preference share with an aggregate par value of 10 million. Aba, Diyos ko. So, ibig sabihin... May pre kailang uh, i-apply natin yung isang slide yung may pre kung may preference share daw. Ito rin. Entity A holds none of the preference shares. Entity B did not declare dividends on the preference shares in the last 3 years including the current year. So cumulative siya then did not declare dividends in the preference share in the last 3 years including the current year. How much is Entity A share in the profit or loss? So take note, balikan natin yung slide na yun. Diba? Ganito sana. Pero, since may preference share, ganito yung i-apply natin. Ibawas mo muna yung share ni preference sa income tsaka mo siya pwedeng i-multiply ng iyong percentage interest. Yun yung rule. Ngayon, ang ating preference share is a cumulative preference. So, anong rule kapag, kapag cumulative preference? Deduct one year, sana yung arrow, deduct one year of dividend whether or not declared man. Whether or not declared man. Kasi pag non-cumulative siya, deduct lang kapag declared. Pero dito, pag cumulative, deduct whether or not it is declared. So, in this case, in this case, cumulative preference siya. So, tawag dito. And uh, wala naman nagsabing kaya whether or not declared. So, bawas tayo ng for one year. So, saan yun dito? 4 million. Wait lang, hanapin mo natin ito si ano. So, ganito yun, ganito yun lang pag-compute sa ano. So, in preference share, 10 million. Times, ano yun? 10 million times 5%. Ten million times point zero five. That's five hundred thousand. Five hundred k yan. So ngayon, etong four m mo. Bawasan mo ng five hundred k. So that's three point five million. Which in turn I-multiply mo na yung 20% mo. O, di ba? Ganyan lang. Two million per bandit times 0.20, 700,000. So, letter B. So, ganyan, di ba? May preference share. So, since may preference share, and walang and the investor holds nothing holds none of the preference so yun multiply mo na kailangan mo nang itanggal diyan so 3.5 ang matitira dun tsaka ka lang mag multiply ng iyong percentage interest so yan 700k now ito naman entity a acquires 20% interest kay entity b on September 1 2001 so on November 30, 2003, so after, after two years, 
because of a shortfall in cash flows, entity A sells one half of its of the investment kay entity B. The remaining shares held do not give entity A a significant influence over entity B. Entity A uses a calendar year accounting period during what period? So ang tanong, during what period should entity A apply the equity method of PS28? So ito, di ba? balikan natin. Investor starts to apply equity method on the date it obtains significant influence and ceases to apply the equity method cap on the date that it loses such significant influence. So, walang nagmamata yan kung calendar or fiscal year. So, in this case, September 1, na-obtain yung significant influence. Then, nung November 30, nagbenta siya. Binenta niya yung one half. So, that's the date that the significant influence ceases to ano? Uh, ceases to be recognized under or accounted for under equity method. So, that is letter B. So, yan lang si PS28. So, napakadali. Uh, I would say na napakadali pero madali siyang intindihin. So, with that, next topic tayo. Or mag-lunch muna ako. Gutom na ako eh. Okay, okay, okay. Dito na tayo sa ating third topic for this lecture video which is oy, uh, tawag dito. Which is Ano ba? Oh, yun. Financial reporting in hyperinflationary economies. PAS 29. Financial reporting in hyperinflationary economies. So, ano ba itong standard na ito? Anong learning objectives natin para dito? Una is to state the core principle under PAS 29. And second, describe the restatement procedures under PAS 29. So, ano bang labot ng standard na ito? Ngayon, before that, let's talk about the Stable monetary assumption. Under the stable monetary assumption, though, the purchasing power of money is assumed to be stable. Therefore, inflation is ignored. The exception to this concept is hyperinflation. Bakit ito pinag-usapan? Because the stable monetary assumptions provides us consistency in the reporting. Meaning, because of that consistency in the financial reporting, comparable yung FS mo from the previous year sa iyong current FS. Hence, the stable monetary assumption because of the concept of consistency. Kasi kung consistent yan, edi you can compare that with the previous FS, with the previous statements. Comparable pa rin sila. Ngayon, kaya nandito si stable monetary assumption. Kaya si inflation is ignored. However, the stable monetary assumption, the concept of this is ignored kapag mayroon ng hyperinflation. Bakit? Kasi itong hyperinflation, ano to siya eh? Out of, ordi out of the ordinary na to siya eh. Kasi ang inflation, that is ano eh, normal na yan eh. Pero yung hyperinflationary, hyperinflation, that is out of the ordinary. Hindi na yan normal. So because of this ano, uh, the, uh, to, because of this abnormality, ibahin na natin yung ating ano, presentation. Hence, PS29. Because of the existence or the possible uh, because of the ano meron ng hyperinflation medyo hindi na magiging consistent yan eh pabago-bago na yung value niyan so hindi na maging comparable so hindi na magiging proper yung presentation hence PS29 so ito ito price level changes ito may idea naman kayo napagdaanan niyo naman ang economics di ba econ subjects niyo so di ba general price levels and the purchasing power of money have an inverse relationship Ito, inflation, deflation. Pero ano nga ba tong inflation? Basically, ang inflation is the increase in prices. While at the same time, there's a decrease in the purchasing power of money. Meaning, yung piso mo dati, nakakabili pa yun ng apat na candy. Yun yung power niya. Yung piso mo, apat na candy ang pwede mong bilhin. Pero ngayon, yung piso mo, since bumaba na yung purchasing power niyan, because of inflation, isang candy na lang ang mabibili mo. Hindi, dati apat. So, apat yung purchasing power niya. Purchasing pa, apat na candy yung kanyang purchasing power na piso. Pero ngayon, yung purchasing power ng piso mo, isang candy na lang. So, bumaba. Inflation yun. In this case, ito yung inverse relationship. If the general prices level increases, this means that the purchasing power of money has decreased. So, inverse relationship. Tumaas ang prices level. Tumaas ang presyo. Bumaba yung purchasing power ng pera. That is inflation. On the other hand, di ba? inverse relationship to eh. On the other hand, when the general price level decreases, bumaba ang presyo. Hence, it will affect na 
This means that the purchasing power of money increase. So, inverse siya. Baliktad. Na? Deflation ang tawag doon. So, yun na. Inflation. Their general price level increase. Purchasing power of money decreases. Mataas yung presyo, maba yung, yung ability, yung purchasing power ng pera mo. Price level changes. So, yun na. Yun yun. Hyper. Yun. Inflation pa lang yun. E pagdating sa hyperinflation na yun na. Abnormality na yan. Kasi sobra na yung changes na nangyari. Sobra na yung changes na nangyari. Abnormality na. Hyperinflation occurs when inflation is very high. So, ano mga bansa na may naka-experience ng hyperinflation? Argentina. O, di ba? Uh, Tawag dito, Venezuela. Zimbabwe. Yung German, ano, German mark after the World War I. Yun. Mga hyperinflation yun. Grabe ang pagtaas ng prices. Well, at the same time, yung value ng pera nila, pababa ng pababa. Hence, na nagiging record na sila, di ba? Lagyan ng multiple zeros yung kanilang either damihan nila yung volume ng cash or lagyan nila ng multiple zeros yung kanilang paper currency to accommodate or to at least sabayan yung level ng hyperinflation kasi tumataas na eh. Yung nakakita ka ng Zimbabwe dollar, trillion-trillion. Pero yung value na pagkalabas ng Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe economy, mababa. Di ba? Na hyperinflation, of course, when inflation is very high. That is an abnormality na in the situation. Ngayon, pasok to si PS29. PS29 does not establish an absolute rate at which hyperinflation is dim rise. Hindi yan, walang threshold na sinasabi na, okay, pag naging 50% na yung, 50% na yung inflation rate, okay, hyperinflation na to. Hindi, walang sinasabi. Walang ganyang threshold na ginagamit kahit saan man. Because hyperinflation is a matter of judgment. Oo. What do you mean by matter of judgment? Usually kapag yung regulatory body ng economy na yon, for example, sa atin, central bank, oo, sila yun ang magdi-declare na may hyperinflation. Oo, usually it's the central bank or the government. So, yung matter of judgment, it, it is basically, ano, based on the, ano, kung ano yung sasabi ng regulatory body na, okay, ngayon may hyperinflation na tayo. Pasensya na. Parang ganon. Or, wala pa tayong hyperinflation. Ganon. So, matter of judgment lang yan, pero hindi ng company, but rather the regulatory body. The government, kumbaga. So, yun na. So, yun ang sasabi natin. So, ulitin natin, bakit? Bakit? Nagkaroon ng PS29. Kasi, ulitin ko lang, ha? Hyperinflation, because of this abnormality, yung purchasing power ng pera, nag-iiba. Yung value niya. Oo, grabe yung changes. Which means na yung stable monetary assumption, ignored na talaga. So which means yung consistency ng FS mo, hindi na, nawala, na disregard na. And because of that consistency being disregarded, hindi na magiging comparable yung FS mo. So, PS29. Ngayon, ano ang indicators ng hyperinflation? So ito, the po general population prefers to keep its wealth in non-monetary assets Gaya ng ano, gold. Di ba? Ang value kasi ng gold, very consistent. Or in a relatively stable foreign currency, which is, as of the moment, the US dollar. So instead na, eh, ano nila? I... I... Paano ito? Encash nila yung kanilang ano? Encash na yung kanilang pera in their, in their local currency. I-gagastos na lang nila. I-invest na lang nila, kumbaga, on other assets na kung saan consistent yung yung value niya sa so, non monetary assets like like gold or a relatively stable foreign currency like the US dollar para hindi magbago yung value ng kanilang asset o yung value ng kanilang wealth amount of local currency held are immediately invested to maintain purchasing power bisa bin before pa nila like for example sa Argentina uh, uh, every six months ata or every week tumataas yung presyo ng bilihin. Hmm, tumataas yung presyo ng bilihin, if I remember correctly. So, like for example, example lang to. Next week, there's a 50% inflation. Oo, from this day to next week, 50% inflation. So, may pera ka ngayon. So, hihintayin mo pa ba yung next week bago ka bumili kung saan yung value ng pera mo bagsak na ng 50%? Or bilhin mo na lang ngayon habang hindi pa dumadating yung devaluation next week. Bilhin mo na lang ngayon. Oh, hindi 
purchase ka na ngayon kaysa hintayin mo pang mas bumaba yung value ng pera mo. Hence, the amounts of local currency held are immediately invested to maintain purchasing power. Kaysa nahintayin mo pang bumaba. Invest mo na agad. The general population regards monetary amounts not in terms of the local currency but in terms of relatively stable foreign currency prices may be quoted in that currency like for example yung di ba if you will search the internet may mga certain countries na ang ginawang uh, national currency nila is the US dollar o nagpalit sila ng kanilang ano currency instead of their local currency ginamit nila yung US dollar eh. kahit hindi eh hindi naman sila under ng USA eh. pero ginamit nila yung yung US dollar para maging ano para mag to quote prices in that currency kasi the US dollar is relatively stable oh search mo sa internet mara if ever man hindi pa kayo aware sa idea na to may kita kayo di ba name ng bansa tapos yung currency nakalagay US dollar tapos titingnan mo eh hindi nga siya under sa US bakit US dollar because of this para mag para at the very least they can maintain the value of their wealth mm so pag may nakita kayo ng ano country na hindi under sa US pero US dollar yung kanilang currency, you can safely assume na may hyperinflation sa country na yan, kaya napilitan silang gumamit ng foreign currency to quote their prices because mas stable yung foreign currency na yun kaysa sa kanilang local currency. Pangatlo, sale and purchases on credit take place at prices that compensate for the expected loss of purchasing power during the credit period. So, di ba? Kasi credit ah oh ito, ito even if the period is short so yun kasi di ba pag credit deferred mo na yung bayaran diyan so pag deferred yung bayaran diyan ibig sabihin maghihintay ka pa di ba hihintayin mo pa yung bayad so so yung hihintayin mo pa yung bayad na tendency is since that is an hyperinflationary economy bababa yung value ng marireceive mo as compared sa on cash agad na bayaran so in order to compensate for such expected loss tataasan yan yung price to compensate for the expected loss. Pangapat, interest rates, wages, and prices are linked to a price index. And panglima, the cumulative inflation rate over 3 years is approaching or exceeds 100%. So ito, mga indicators lang to. Pero, yung hyperinflation, matter of judgment pa rin. Indicators lang to na meron ng hyperinflation. So, ano nga bang ba take note ah, itong nakalimutan ko sabihin sa start. Itong PS29 under to sa ano? Under to sa Accounting for Business Combination. Under to sa Accounting for Business Combination BAPE 7 or Advanced Accounting Part 2. Kalimutan ko sabihin sa start. So, to puta tayo sa corp na explain natin yung ano, introductory concept ng hyperinflation, seven water assumption kung bakit nag-exist si PS29. With that said, let's go to the core principle of PS29. Ngayon, here's the thing. The financial statements of an entity whose functional currency is the currency of a hyperinflationary weight lang yung text. La 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 Ah. Okay. So the core principle ng PS29 is ito, unang bullet point. The principal statements of an entity whose functional currency is the currency of a hyperinflationary economy, di ba? Functional currency ito yung basically yung currency na ginagamit nila sa kanilang transactions, di ba? Nasa pag-usapan natin to sa previous lecture videos. So the financial statements of an entity whose functional currency is the currency of the hyperinflationary economy shall be stated in terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period. Shall be stated in terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period. So, pag functional currency mo is the currency of the hyperinflationary economy, so pagdating ng reporting mo sa ano, end of the reporting period, ang gagamitin yung basis is yung measuring unit at the end of the reporting period. May example naman yan later on. So, na take note. Kapag yung functional currency mo, yung functional currency, simplehan natin, yan yung, napag-usapan naman yung last time pa eh, yan yung currency na ginagamit mo basically sa transaction mo. Kasi ba diba, dalawa yan? 
functional currency and presentation currency. Functional currency, yan yung ginagamit mo sa iyong transactions, sa iyong operations. Presentation currency, yan yung indicated o yan yung ginamit mo sa iyong FS. So, di, iba yan sila. Pero minsan, so, yun yung, tanda, recap lang sa napag-usapan natin. So, kapag yung functional currency mo is the currency of an hyperinflationary economy, ibig sabihin, baka yung Zimbabwean dollar o yung Argentina, ah, dyan, sa Argentina nakalimutan. O Venezuela and Bolivar. Di ba? Pag yun yung functional currency mo, ah, ba Diyos ko, ang gagawin mo, it will be stated in terms of the measuring unit. Ano ba tong measuring unit? Malalaman natin. At the end of the reporting period. May, may formula naman yan eh. So, the comparative information for the previous period shall also be stated in terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period. Na ito yung sasabi natin kanina. Di ba? Di ba? Ito yung sasabi natin. Ay, saan yun? Ito, di ba? Stable monetary assumption. The purchasing power of money is assumed to be stable. Meaning, dapat consistent yan all throughout. Bakit? Mahalaga ang consistency kasi para maging comparable siya to the previous reporting periods. Para makita mo yung ano, di ba? Yung journey o yung progress. Kaya mahalaga yan siya, yung stable monetary assumption. Hence, inflation is ignored. Nasabi natin ito kanina. However, yung exception sa concept na yan is kapag meron ng hyperinflation. Bakit? Hyperinflation is an abnormality in the system. So, you need to account for that. Because it really changes everything. Yeah? Hence, ganito, hyperinflation. Ngayon, kita nyo dito, the comparative information for the previous period shall also be stated in the terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period. Meaning, magkakaroon ka ng restatement. Oo. Kasi di ba nagkaroon ng hyperinflation. So, yung current period mo, yung current period mo, iba na yung kanyang presentation because of the hyperinflation. Yung previous period mo, wala pang hyperinflation yan. Hence, hindi sila magtutugma ng current period mo. Kasi yung current period mo, may hyperinflation, yung previous period wala. So, hindi magiging comparable yung information mo. So, paano natin yung gawing comparable? E di, i restate mo yung previous period para makita mo yung comparability nila. Oo, para ma-achieve mo yung comparability nila. So, paano mo i-restate yung previous period? Ito. Shall be stated in terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period. O yan. Pag ginawa mo yan, e di, yung previous period mo, in-account mo na yung hyperinflation dyan, same sa nangyari sa current period, hence magiging comparable na sila. So, tinugma mo na sila. Because comparability of information is very important for the users. Because the users would like to see what happened in the company. Ano yung progress nito? Ano mga nangyari? Ano mga changes? Diba? So, ulit natin. Current period, measuring unit. Current at the reporting period to account for the hyperinflationary. Or to account for the hyperinflation. Then, yung previous period mo, restate mo yan. Using or dano shall be stated in terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period for what purpose para maging comparable sila si current at si previous period oo for the sake of comparability comparative information kasi di ba yun yung pinag-usapan natin to so presentation of information as a supplement to unrestated financial statement hindi yan permitted hindi permitted. And separate presentation of the FS before the statement is discouraged. Huwag mo nang ipakita yung ano, before the statement ng previous period. Huwag mo nang ipakita. Oo. Yung pakita mo lang is kung ano yung kung saan may kung saan in-account na yung hyperinflation. Yun ang ipakita mo. Kaya nga, ito not permitted. Ito discouraged. So, restatement of financial statements. Statement of financial position. Ito, <coughs> So, ito sa statement of financial position natin o yung balance sheet. So, anong nilistate natin dyan? Anong binabago natin dyan? Uh, excuse me po. So, ito. Sa statement of financial position natin sa balance sheet, yung mga nilistate lang natin, yung non-monetary items non-monetary items. Di ba? Napag-usapan naman natin previously kung ano itong monetary items and non-monetary items. Basically, yung monetary items 
These are money held and items to be received or paid in fixed or determinable amount of money without reference to future prices or specific, blah, 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 of specific goods or services. So, yan. Fixed or determinable na sila. Without reference to anything. Ngayon, anything outside that, anything other than that, is considered to be non-monetary. Okay? Considered to be non-monetary. May mga example sa mayan eh. So, with that said, napag- recap lang sa napag-usapan natin previously. So, with that said, only non-monetary items, statement of financial position amounts, not already expressed in, ter- in terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period, are stated using the constant peso accounting. The constant peso accounting. May formula naman yan later on. So, yun ha? Mga non-monetary items lang ang ating i-re-restate sa ating statement of financial position. Pero yung mga amount na na already restated or expressed in terms of the measuring unit current at the, the reporting period, hindi na kailangan. Kasi they're already restated. Eh. They're already stated in that way. they already expressed in that way. So, yun na. Only non-monetary items, statement of financial position amounts, not already expressed, ah, not already expressed in the terms of the measuring unit current at the end of the reporting period are restated when using the constant peso accounting. So, yun lang yung kailangan i-restate natin. Yung mga monetary items, hindi na kailangan i-restate. Bakit? Because they're already expressed in terms of the monetary unit current at the end of the reporting period. Because, di ba? Ganyan yung nature ni monetary item. Another difference between the monetary and non-monetary is si monetary item, madali siyang liquidate ang non-monetary, mahirap, kang ili- mahirap silang i-liquidate. Mahirap silang i-encash. Kaya, flexible yung monetary items. Hence, they are not, they, uh, hindi, na, hindi na sila kailangan i-restate because they're already expressed in the terms of the monetary unit current at the end of the reporting period. Yan yung reason. So, ha? take note. So, pagdating sa statement of financial position, yung restatement ang gagawin natin, ito. Non-monetary items, those that are not already expressed, sila lang yung, ito, no? ang restate, monetary items, no need. Because they're already expressed in the terms. Already. Express na sila eh. Yun yung nature ng monetary items. So, ito. And monetary assets are divided into two. Uh, monetary asset and monetary liabilities. So, ito, ito na. Pagdaan na naman ito previously pa eh. So, recap lang ito ah. So, ito. Examples of monetary assets. Cash, cash equivalent. Receivables natin and the related allowance. Financial assets at amortized costs. Mga debt instruments. Finance list receivables. Cash render value. Mga monetary assets yan. Ito naman. Examples of monetary liabilities. Mga FL at amortized costs. Like accounts, notes, bonds, and finance list payables. Accrued expense payables in fixed and determinable amounts of money. Refundable deposits. Gaya nito. Security deposits on leases to be returned to tenants at the end of the lease term and deposits for returnable containers. Difference payable rin. Ito. Take note. Gaya na sabi ito previously and kanina, all other items cannot be classif- that cannot be classified as monetary items they're to be considered non-monetary. Hmm, yun yung sabi ito nito kanina pa eh. But take note, si retained earnings, anak bulan to siya. Because retained earnings is neither monetary Neither non-monetary. Anak bulan siya. Because retained earnings is treated as a balancing figure after restatement. Ito, na-mention naman natin sa previous videos natin. Ha? Take note. Ito ang monetary, mga monetary lang to. Other than this, non-monetary na. Si retained earnings, anak bulan, neither sa dalawa, balancing figure kasi siya. Ito, examples of non-monetary assets. Physical assets, inventories, intangible, financial assets, for value, advanced payment, etc. etc. Ito naman, non-monetary liabilities. And equity items such as share capital and share premium are also considered to be non-monetary items and thus stated. So, si retained earnings, equity item rin siya, pero anak bulan siya. So, neither sa dalawa. So, non-monetary items carried at other than costs. Diba? As a general guide, only non-monetary mesh are measured at cost. Sila lang yung nire-restate. Sila lang yung nire-restate. The following non-monetary items, hindi na kailangang i-restate. Bakit? Due to their nature. Eh. 
Tingnan mo. Non-monetary items that are measured at net realizable value or fair value as at the end of the reporting period. O yung non-monetary items measured at revalued amounts as at the end of the reporting period. Kasi kung makikita nyo, itong sila, yung net realizable value nila, yung fair value nila, yung basis niyan is yung end of the reporting period. Yan yung basis of the measurement. E kung babalikan nyo to, o, oh, kung babalikan nyo to, measuring unit at current at the end of the reporting period, same yung nature. So since ginawa mo na dito yung, resta yung restatement, hindi mo na gawing i-restate pa siya ulit. Parang ganun yung labot niyan. Since they are already presented, since they are already expressed, they are already expressed sa kanilang value as of the end of the reporting period, no need to restate them. Kasi redundant na. Gag kung gagawa, redundant na. Oo. Kasi ginawa mo na to basically. So huwag mo nang gawin ulit. So, yun yung sinasabi dito. So, if the NRB, fair value or revalued amount, is determined at the date other than the reporting period, then this non-monetary item is nevertheless stated. So, yung take note, ha? At the end of the reporting period. Kasi, basically, ginawa, parang ginawa mo na rin to. Pero kapag, yes, uh, other than the date at the end of the reporting period, so, hindi mo finalo. Basically, hindi mo to finalo. Kasi, Oh, end of the reporting period ang sabi. Basically, hindi mo finalo yan. So, record ka paling mag-restate. Oh, kasi, other than the date at the end of the reporting period. So, yeah, sana huwag kayong maguluhan dito. Basta at the end of the reporting period eh. Oh, kasi kung ano yung value nila at the end of the reporting period, yun yung presentation nila eh. Sabi ng standard nila. So, basically, parang finalo mo na rin to. Oo. Oh, oh. So, no need to restate them again because that is redundant. And, hindi na kailangan. So to, pagdating sa statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, all items are restated. All items are restated. So ito yung formula ng restatement natin. Historical cost nila times mo sa fraction ng current price index, which is the index as of the end of the reporting period. So yun na o. Oh. Yun na o. Oh. Yun na o. Oh. Oh. Measuring unit na o. Oh. O oh, yan na. Divided by the historical price index which is the index of the item as of the acquisition date. So, kanong lalabas na ano dyan? Yun ang multiply mo sa historical cost. Yun yung ilalagay mo sa, restate, sa restated amount niya. Now, may, may ano tayo dito. If the historical price index is impracticable to be determined, yeah? oo, So, such as for transactions recurring very frequently, yung average na yung gagamitin. Average general price index for the period may be used. So, pag, wala, pag impracticable si historical price, si average general price ang gagamitin. So, gain, ito, gain or loss on monetary amount. So, non-monetary items, monetary assets less the monetary liabilities and yung historical cost nila, less the net monetary items, Ending yung restated. So, di ba? Ito yung hindi pa restated, yung historical cost nila. Ito, iba, ibabawas mo dyan ngayon. Oh. Yung restated na nila. Oh, yung restated monetary asset minus the restated monetary liabilities, kaya nga net monetary items. So, kung ano yung difference nila, gain or loss yun. Oo. Pag positive, o oh, kasi o, oh, gain. Ibig sabihin, tumas mga value. Kung loss, which is most of the case, ganun. <laughs> Kasi nga, hyperinflation eh. So, loss. The gain or loss on the net monetary position also called as the purchasing power gain or loss recognized sa PNL. Ito ah, yung before restatement and after restatement. So, kung anong difference sila gain or loss to be recognized sa PNL. So, punta tayo sa application of concepts. So, ito. Entity A operates in a hyperinflationary economy daw. So, si Entity A has the following. Has the following assets. Before the statement on December 31, ito, before the statement to. Yung AR niya, net 300, building net 900. The building was acquired down on May 21, 2020. So the general price indices or indices, indices, no? 
yung dices na lang, are as follow. May 21, 100, average 180, and December 31, 150. So, ito yung ano, current price index yung, yung 150. Ito yung historical price index. Ito yung average general price index. Di ba? Yung 180. So, ang tanong sa atin, what are the restated amounts of the asset? What are the restated amounts of the asset? So, saan dito yun? Saan yung ito? So, dito, ang gagawin natin, Dito, ang ga... Saan dito yun? Ayan. Accounts receivable and the building. Ngayon, itong accounts receivable, it is already net. Anong gagawin dyan? Wala. Yan na mismo yung kanyang value. Why? Balikan natin. Monetary asset receivables and monetary items are not restated because they are already representative of their value. Hence, maintain natin ang 300K. Oh, maintain natin 300K. Oh, power of deduction. Alam natin sa uh, accounts si Sibo ito. Useful rin ito sa board exam. Power of deduction. So, alam nyo na yung isang answer is may 300,000. Kasi alam nyo, monetary items are not restated in a hyperinflationary economy because they're already representative of their true value. So, power of deduction. Alam nyo yung 300, yung AR. So, Tanggal ang A and B. Wala. Tip lang ito pag ganoon sa board exam. Power of deduction. Para mas more chances of winning. So ngayon, ang pag-iisipan mo na lang is C or D. Kasi sila dalawa may 300,000. Ngayon, without even solving, alamin mo lang yung ano, di ba? Alamin mo lang yung concept. Yung building ba? Monetary item ba yan o hindi? Hindi. Kasi ano siya eh? Non-monetary siya. Eh di ba ang non-monetary ang non-monetary is nire-restate, nire-restate, nire-restate. In this case, bakit itong letter D? Bakit itong letter D? May 900 pa rin para sa building. E alam naman natin yung building is already a non-monetary and must be restated. So, hindi dapat 900 yan. Considering na iba rin yung ano nito eh. Oh, purchase yung yung acquisition date and ano alam mo magkaka hindi alam mo pag without even solving or holding your calculator alam mo hindi magiging 900 yan at ang restated amount yan oh kasi alam mo nang kailangan restate yan and titingnan mo pa lang yung gagamitin mong fraction oo 150 over 100 alam mo magiging iba yung amount yan so power of deduction without even solving the problem oh alam mo tanggal yan so alam mo letter c yung magiging answer oh yun Power of deduction pa lang, walang solving. So, tip lang yan sa board exam. Power of deduction. Pero solve pa rin natin. So, 900. Uy, na-cover siya. Sorry, itumove lang natin to. O, yan o. Kung tinan natin, alam mo yung 900 yan eh. Alam mong non-monetary yan. So, alam mong i-resistate yan. Plus, kita mo dito. Yung mga index na gagawin mo or gagamitin mo. Iba. So, alam mong hindi magiging 900 dyan yung value ni building. So, alam mong mali na to si letter D. Power of deduction. So, without even holding the calculator, alam mo ng letter C yung answer. Concepts pa lang ang kabisado mo. So, with that, solve pa rin natin. Paano? 900. Uy, saan yung no? Kaya, nawala ng income ano? 900. Anong formula ulit? O, current price index minus the historical price index. So, Current price is 150. Ang acquisition date niya, historical price niya, since building to, hindi naman to ano eh, hindi naman to, hindi naman to tag dito, hindi naman to recurring transaction, no, mahirap talang napin, hindi naman to recurring transaction eh, building lang yan. O so, tayo 100. So, 900 times 150 divided by 100. 1,350. So, yan, sakto. Ngayon, let's go to number 2. O, na-cover na naman. So, si number 2, Entity A operates in a hyperinflationary economy. Entity A has total sales of has total sales revenue of 1,200,000. Before this statement, 
on December 31, 2001. The sales were earned evenly during the period. So, ito, the general price indices are as follows. Noong December 31, 100. Yung average is 180. Noong December 31, December 31, 2001, the end of the current reporting period, it's 200. So, what is the restated amount of sales? Now, take note ulit. Yeah. Sales is a recurring transaction. Very is a transaction that recurs very frequently. So, average general price index ang gagamitin natin yan. Kasi impracticable na malaman yung historical price index ng mga sales mo because that is a frequently recurring transaction. Yeah? Impracticable. So, in this case, ang gagamitin mo, ano? Si 180 at si 200. Kasi si, itong si 210, walang la uh, Kasi itong si 100, walang labot yan, eh. Oo, ang sabi lang naman dito sa equation natin, no? yung current price index or divided by the historical price index or the average general price index. So, in this case, siya dalawa lang. So, paano yan? Sana yun? 1, 2 times 200, the current and 180 the average general. So, ang labas dyan, 1, 2, times 200, divided by 180, 1, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, Okay, okay, okay. So, dito tayo sa ating last topic or last standard for this lecture video. So, baba ko muna itong pagmumuka ko. Okay. So, saan tayo? Dito tayo ngayon sa financial instruments presentation. Financial instruments presentation. Ngayon, ah, PS32 tayo. So, uh, gusto ko na magmerienda. So, PS32, anong lang yung objective sa atin dito? Una, state the definition kung ano bang isang financial instrument. Pangalawa, give examples of financial assets and financial liabilities. Pangatlo, differentiate between a financial liability from, a equity, from an equity instrument. And lastly, state the requirements for offsetting financial assets and financial liabilities. Now, ano bang anong labot ni PS32? Take note, PS32 complements PFRS 9, Financial Instruments, and PFR 7, Financial Instruments Disclosure. Now, ang PFR 9 and PFR 7, later pa to sa mga second, second quarter pa natin siya madidiscuss. Now, sir, if that's the case, why na-separate yung discussion nila? Kasi basically, class, pinafollow natin yung flow of discussion sa book ni Zeus para may uniformity yung ating discussion. Pero no worries, maintindihan pa rin ang PS32 without even discussing PFRS 9 and PFRS 7 kasi ang pinupunto dito ni uh, ni PS32 is yung presentation lang. Kasi dito sa PFRS 9, dyan, yung mga in-depth discussion, o oh, baka yung iba sa inyo mabalyo, pero hindi naman siya ganun kahira, pero complex yung discussion nito kasi may mga diagram pa yan. And si PFRS 7, madali lang to kasi disclosure lang to eh. PS32 sa kanya talks about presentation. Presentation lang. Paano siya pinipresent sa financial statements natin? So, uh, so let's go to the first ob learning objective. Definition ng isang financial instrument. So, ano nga ba tong isang financial instrument? A financial instrument is any contract that gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity of another entity. So, ko, so, let's say may dalawang entity tayo. O, oh, bato May dalawang entity tayo. Si entity 1 at si entity 2. So, ang sabi dito, for entity 1, sa kanya, he will recognize that as a financial asset. Si entity 2, he might recognize that as either financial liability or a financial equity. Or equity lang. Yeah? So, is any contract that gives rise to a financial asset of one equity and a financial liability or equity instrument. Bakit to F-E? E, dapat. Anong erase natin ito? Or a equity instrument, EI, sa other entity. So, dapat present yan. 
dapat present tong ano to eh na isa isa financial asset sa isang entity naman financial liability or equity instrument to of another entity so yan na sila yung dalawa so with that eto mga financial assets so yun naman sabi dito eh kasi simple lang tong si ano PS32 dito kayo mawiwindang kay PFRS9 oo oh. PS32, PFRS7, simple lang. Presentation lang kasi ito siya. And ito, disclosure lang. PFRS na yan yung bulk ng discussion. But is dito, dito pala may idea na kayo anong inano sa PFRS9, di ba? So, financial assets is any asset that is, yun, cash, an equity instrument of another, uh, another entity, like yung investment is subject. May example naman later on. At basta ito yung mga financial asset, an equity instrument of another entity, A contractual right to receive cash of another financial asset from another entity. Yeah? A contractual right to exchange financial instruments with another entity under conditions that are potentially favorable. Kasi nga asset to eh. Favorable asset. Kung unfavorable yan, line liability yan. A contract that will only, that will or may be settled in the entity's own equity instrument and is not classified as the entity's own equity instrument. May mga examples yan para hindi kayo malibog later on. Pero ito naman, pag financial liability. Ito naman, is, is any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or other financial asset to another entity. A contractual obligation to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under the conditions that are potentially unfavorable. Ito kayo dito, kita nyo, favorable eh. Potentially favorable, so asset yan. Dito naman, potentially unfavorable, so liability yan. Or a contract that will or may be settled in the entity's own equity instrument and is not classified as the entity's own equity instrument. So yan, mga financial liability yan. Ito naman, equity instrument. Uh, is any, so simple lang, di ba? If you can still remember discussion sa, ano, sa FAR, di ba? Ang equity, residual yan sa parate. Di ba? Always yan sa residual ni asset and liability. So equity instrument is any contract that evidences a residual interest. in the assets of an entity after deducting all of its liability. Ganun kasimple si equity instrument. So, ito mga example sila. So, example sa financial assets, di ba? Ito, mga, di ba? ito yung mga, ano, is any asset, cash, equity, ito. Ito yun sila. Cash and cash equivalent. Gaya na, ano, cash on hand, cash in bank, short-term money placements, ito yung mga, ano, cash equivalents, and cash funds. Ito, mga receivables, such as accounts, notes, loans, and finance receivables. Mga financial yan sila. Investment in equity, ito na yun. Ito yung sasabi natin kanina. An equity instrument of another entity. Gaya ng investment in equity or debt instrument of other entity, sa sell for trading, securities investment subsidiary, ito, ito na yung sila. Sinking fund, yan yung mga examples ng financial assets. Ito naman, hindi mo sila makukun... Asset to sila, pero hindi sila financial. Asset to sila, pero hindi to... Uh, asset to sila... Hindi to sila... Ito, ito, physical assets. Gaya ng inventories, biological assets, PPE, investment. Hindi sila financial, pero asset sila. Intangible, hindi financial, pero asset. Prepaid expense and advance suppliers, yun. And the entity's own equity instrument, gaya ng treasury shares, you cannot consider that as a financial asset. Ito naman examples ng mga financial asset. Binabasa na lang natin ito, di ba? Para kasi nga, simple lang itong CPAS32. O PFRS9 yung bulk ng financial instruments. Nandun yung in-depth discussion niya. So, examples ng financial liability, ito, mga payables, gaya ng accounts, notes, loans, and bonds, mga lease liabilities, yung mga health for trading liabilities and derivative liabilities. Uh, ito, ito, redeemable preference share, yan. Di ba? Mention natin ito kanina. Yes, preference share siya, pero hindi siya part ng equity because that is a financial liability. And security deposits and other returnable deposits. Ito naman, mga... Yes, you can consider this as li uh, ito, mga liability sila pero hindi sila financial. Ito, mga unearned revenue, warranty obligation, taxes, SSET, pag-ibig. Ito yung wala ka. Constructive obligation yan. Mga liabilities sila pero hindi sila financial. Ito, talking about the presentation. Pagdating sa financial liability, the entity has a contractual obligation to pay cash or another financial asset or to exchange financial instrument under potentially unfavorable. Kasi nga, financial liability conditions. Ito naman, pagdating sa equity instrument, the entity has no obligation to pay cash or another financial asset or to exchange 
financial instruments under potentially unfavorable. Ito na obligation. Kasi nga, equity siya eh. Ito, siyempre meron kasi that is a liability. Ito, contract settles through equity instruments. So, pagdating sa financial liability, ito, binabasa na lang natin ito siya eh. Kasi this is more on presentation. Walang in-depth discussion ito. More on theories of account ito. So, pagdating sa financial liability, the contract requires the delivery of first, A, a variable number of the entities on equity instrument in exchange, blah, blah, blah. Basahan nyo na lang ito. Equity instrument. Kasi mas maintindihan nyo ito sa pag nag-discuss na nyo na in-depth yung PFRS 9. So, PFRS 9, that is... Uh, if tama ang pagkakalala ko, intermediate accounting part 2 yan sa equity portion. PFRS 9. Or sa... Oh, if tama ang pagkakalala ko. Ito na, redeemable and callable preference share. Ito, magkaiba to sila. Pero yung redeemable na pag-usapan natin kanina, di ba? kanina pa, financial liability siya. So, itong redeemable preference share, these are preferred stocks. O, oh, preference shares to sila. Pangalan pa lang eh. Which the holder has the right to redeem at a set date. These are classified as financial liability. Bakit? Because when the holder exercises its rights to redeem, the issuer, the entity yung nag-issue ng, ano, ng share na yan, yung company, is obligate, is mandatorily obligated to pay for the redemption price. Oo. So dito, kaya siya naging financial liability kasi si holder has the right to redeem at a set date. Oo. Has the right to redeem at a set date. Ang kaibahan niya sa callable preference share, tingnan nyo dito, these are preferred shares or preferred stocks, which the issuer, yung company na nag-issue, has the right to call at a set date. So, these are classified as equity instrument because, bakit? The right to call is at the discretion of the issuer and therefore has no obligation to pay unless it chooses to call on the shares. So, yan, hindi siya consider as the liability kasi kung makikita nyo dito, favorable ito sa company, sa issuer. Ito, unfavorable, di ba? Kasi redeemable. Wala siyang choice. Oo, basta dumating yung redeemable date, yung set date, required siyang bayaran yan. Oo, required siyang bayaran yan. So, unfavorable yung circumstances na yan. Hence, it is considered to be as financial liability. On the other hand, itong callable preference share, yung right to call. Oo, yung may karapatan dito, si issuer. Oo, yung company. So, favorable sa kanyang conditions. So yan, equity instrument siya. Ito naman, compound financial instrument. Basically, ang pinag-usapan nito, kinumbine yung dalawa. Paano? A compound, compound, a compound, a compound financial instrument is an instrument, is a financial instrument, I mean, that from the issuer's perspective sa kanyang point of view kay company, that financial instrument contains both a liability and an equity component. So, ibig sabihin, compound, dalawang nandyan. Liability and equity component. So, parang kung gagawa ka ng pie, ano niya, ganun. Oh. Yung isang, ah, pangit ng drawing niya ako. So, ganyan, no? Oh. So, ito yung sabi natin financial instrument. So, a portion dyan, liability, FL, another portion is an equity instrument. Yeah? So, yan, compound financial instrument tawag dyan. So, these components are classified and accounted for separately. Papano? As follows. The value assigned to the liability component is its fair value without the equity future. So, it's, is its fair value without the equity future. So, the value assigned to the equity component is yung residual amount. Kasi yung nature ng equity, di ba? Yun yung nature ng equity. Balikan natin. Oh, in any contract that evidences a residual interest. Oh. Residual talaga ang ang nature ni equity. So, in this case, oh, after deducting the value assigned to the liability component from the total fair value of the compound instrument. So, kung yung fair value ng compound instrument is 1 million, oh, compound instrument, 1 million yung kanyang fair value. Now, separately stated na yung fair value ng liability component without the equity instrument or without the equity future is 700 lang. Oh, without the equity, yung liability ni ano? Ni liability, yung fair value ni liability component without the equity, 700k. So, yung residual niyan, which is 300k, yun yung masasabi yung equity component. Kasi residual amount yung kanyang ano eh. So, ganyan yung 
pag-separate sa kanila. Ito naman, treasury shares. Treasury shares are an entity's own share that were previously issued but were subsequently they acquired but not retired. Ibig sabihin, hawak-hawak pa rin yan nila. Oo, oh, pwede nangyari yan. Siya, o nangyari yan. Like, Mag-issue ka ng share, tapos babawiin mo. Tapos hindi mo ni-retire, hindi mo, hindi mo kinancel, kumbaga. So, hinahawak mo pa rin. So, <coughs> treasury shares ang tawag dyan. Now, treasury shares are treated as a deduction from equity kasi yes, they are shares. But they are not outstanding. Oo, hindi sila outstanding. Hindi sila pagmamayari ng third parties. Oo, kasi yung nagmamayari niyan is the company. So, it's nonsense to treat them as part of equity. Kaya yan tinatanggal. Treasury shares, tra, tra, uh, treasury shares transactions are recognized directly in equity. Therefore, they do not they do not result to gains or losses. Bakit? Kasi, ganito yung nangyari yan eh. Itong equity mo. Equity mo yan. So, pag may nagkakaroon ng transaction sa ano, treasury shares mo, para nagkakaroon ng reclassification yan. O, from one treasury, from one part of the equity to another, para nagbabaliktaran na yan sila, So walang ano, walang nangyayaring gains or losses kasi within the equity lang. Kaya walang nangyayaring gains or loss kasi within the equity lang yung transactions. Ito naman, interest dividends losses and gains. Interest dividends losses and gains that relate to financial liability. Pag it relates to financial liability, these are recognized as an income or expenses in profit or loss. Kapag naman equity instrument, those interest dividends losses and gains relates to an equity instrument. Directly in equity. Kasi nga, equity. And lastly, offsetting of financial assets and liabilities. So, Diyan dito yun. So, a financial asset and a financial liability are offset and only the net amount is presented in the financial statements of position when the entity has bought. So, may conditions. Kung hindi na satisfy tong conditions na to, you cannot offset a financial asset with a financial liability. You cannot offset. Kapag hindi na satisfy tong dalawang conditions. So, ano yung mga conditions na yun? A legal right of offset, meron ka. And second, an intento, intention to settle the amount on a net basis or simultaneously. So, unless yan, both conditions are present, you cannot offset. Dapat present yan sila para maka-offset ka. So, let's go to the application of concepts. So, ito. So, na, a contract that will be settled. Oh, financial instruments daw. A contract that will be settled by the entity receiving or delivering a fixed number of its own equity instrument in exchange for a fixed amount of cash or other financial or another financial asset is most likely to be classified by the issuer as equity instrument yan. So, balikan yung definition sa previous slide. So, that is considered to be an equity instrument. Second, presentation. Which of the following is classified as an equity instrument rather than a financial? So, classified as an equity instrument rather than a financial liability. Una, preference shares that are mandatory redeemable yan. Financial liability yan. A contract that is settled by the delivery of a variable number of entities on equity instruments in exchange for fixed amounts of cash or another financial asset. Other entities on equity, so financial liability yan. Next, a contract that is settled by the delivery of a fixed number of the entities on equity instrument in exchange for a viable amount of cash or another financial asset. So, balikan natin to dito. Hmm. So, yan o. Oh. oh, variable, variable, fix, fix. So, ang answer. Shares issued but were subsequently reacquired. Ito. Letter D. So, compound, ano? Compound instruments. Hindi naman ito na-cover, no? O, oh, hindi na-cover. Oh, 4A. Variable amount. So, ilagay ito sa taas ito ngayon. Punta tayo sa compound instruments. So, entity A issue sa convertible bonds with face amount of 2 million for 2 million 600. For 2 million 600. Each... 1,000 bond, 1,000 peso bond is convertible into 10 shares with par value of 60. On issuance date, uh, the bond are selling at 102,000 or uh, at 
without the conversion option. So, yun yung fair value ng bond. Bonds are selling at 102 without the conversion option. So, what is the value allocated to the equity component on initial recognition? So, paano ang solve niyan? So, 2 million yung face amount. Tawag dito. 2 million. 206 yung ano? Yung compound value niya. Both liability and the equity. So, 2 million 600. So, anong sinabi natin dito kanina? Para malaman. Yung value nila, si liability component yung fair value without the equity feature. So, yung sarili niya. Tapos, kung anong residual nun? O, oh, kung anong residual nun, equity component na. O, oh, ibabawas mo sa ano eh. So, in this case, 2,600,000 yung combined value ni liability and equity. 2,600,000. So, para malaman natin yung value nilang dalawa, in this case, yung value ng equity component, hanapin mo natin yung value ng liability component, which is uh, face amount of 2 million times mo sa 102. 1.02, 1.02, 2 million 40. So, yan yung value ng liability component. Oh, kasi oh, on issuance dates, the bonds are selling at 102. So, parang yun yung fair value niya. Oo, oh, 102. So, 2 million 40. Paano nakuha? 2 million times 102. Oh, so, parang times 102%, parang ganun. So, minus natin. Magkana yan? Minus, uh, it's 560. O, oh, yun, 560. Lumabas siya. Yan yung value ng ating liability component. O, oh, yeah. Yung total value nila, both liability and equity component, Para malaman yung value ni equity, i-deduct mo yung value ni, yung separate value ni uh, liability component. Kasi residual si equity. Yun yung nature niya. Next, treasury shares, interest, dividends, losses, and gains. Which of the following statement is correct? So, entity A acquires its own share for 10,000 shares of the so entity A recognizes a gain or loss. Wala, wala kang ano. Kasi within the equity yan eh. So, wala kang i-recognize sa gain or loss kasi within the equity lang yan. Gains or losses arising from a financial liability is recognized directly in equity. No. Nakalagay dito, profit or loss yung recognition. Hmm, di ba? O, tiris to. C. Entity A declares dividends. Entity A will recognize the amount of the dividends as expense in profit or loss. Wala. O. Saan yun? No. Sa equity yan eh. Okay. Tapos sa letter D. Entity A settles a liability with a carrying amount of 100,000 for 85,000. The transaction results to a 15,000 gain that is recognized as a profit or loss. So entity sells liability with carrying amount of Oh. Yeah. Financial liability to. So recognize mo sa Oh. Entity A, settle sa liability with carrying amount of 100,000 for 85,000. So, 100,000 yung utang niya, pero binayaran niya lang ng 85. So, goods for him, di ba? Kasi 100,000 yung utang, pero 85 lang binayad niya. So, this transaction results to a 15,000 gain. And it is recognized in profit or loss kasi liability yan eh. So, with that, letter D ang answer. Da? Haluan lang ng no, no, analysation. And lastly, Entity A has an account receivable of 200,000 from Entity B. In addition, Entity A has an account payable of 160,000 to Entity B. So, parang baliktad sila, no? Oh, ito na yun dito. Oh, ito na yun. Si A may receivable. Ganito na nga niya. Si A may receivable kay B. So, si B may payable kay A. On the other hand, si A may payable kay B. Si B, may receivable kay A. So, parang nagdoble sila. May two separate transactions na pwedeng ma-offset. Kasi si A, si B, mayroon sa ano, oh, ganito basically yung itsura niyan. So, since ganito yung itsura niyan, may chances na pwede silang ma-offset. Pwede yan ma-offset. Pero dapat present yung dalawang conditions. So, basahin natin. So, to si Entity A, may accounts receivable kay B. C, 
si on the other hand may accounts payable naman siya kay B so baliktad siya so circle of life so with that pwedeng may possibility of offsetting kasi may utang ka sa kaibigan mo yung kaibigan mo may utang naman sa iyo so quits parang quits na lang di ba if ever pero s'yempre dito sa accounting standard natin mayroong kailangan conditions na kailangan ma-satisfy para ma-allow yung offsetting ng financial asset sa financial liability Basahin natin. The accounts receivable is due in 30 days. Well, the accounts payable is due in 90 days. Entity A intends to settle. Uh, first, the accounts receivable. Uh, tag dito. If entity A has legal right of... Uh, ah? If entity A has a legal right of ops, uh, offset of how much accounts receivable will be shown in its statement of financial position. Uh, financial position. So, so, ano magiging answer dyan? Kasi 200,000 yung accounts receivable niya. Yan. So, ang tanong, how much accounts receivable will be shown in each statement of financial position? So, mababawasan ba itong 200? Magiging 40 na lang ba ito siya? Kasi 200 minus 160. Eh. So, 40 na lang ba ito siya? Or baka yung 160 lang. O, oh, di ba? Ang magiging answer, 200 pa rin. Walang nangyaring offset. Walang nangyaring offset. Bakit? Kasi, Eh, ang sabi lang dito, Entity A intends to settle first the accounts receivable. So, walang, hindi na-satisfy itong, oh, itong second condition natin. Kasi so, oh, so Entity A intends to settle, kasi hindi satisfy Intention to settle the amount on a net basis or simultaneously. Wala eh. Kasi ang plano lang ni Entity A intends to settle first the accounts receivable. Hindi niya, there's no intention to, there's no intention. Kasi, oh, may lang, you can assume that that's a legal right to offset off. Kasi, oh, ang accounts receivable niya, due in 30 days, accounts payable niya, due in 90 days, ha? Pero, wala talagang intention to settle the amount on a net basis. Kasi, ang intention lang ni A, accounts receivable lang, first. Wala siyang intention to settle net basis ng 260. So, since walang intention to settle in a net basis, oh, ayaw niyang inet, ayaw niyang equits na lang, yeah? ayaw niyang i-offset, 200,000 pa rin. Walang nangyaring offset. So, yan yung ating discussion for this topic. Or for this lecture video. So, with that said, yung quiz for this lecture video, isasabay ko na lang sa quiz ng lecture video kasi next week is Holy Week. So, may time kayong mag-repent may time kayong humingi ng divine intervention para sa mga grade sheet. So, isasabay ko na lang yung quiz ng lecture video na to the week after next week. O, para may time kayong makapag-usap kay Lord. So, with that, end na tayo ng ating lecture video. So, good night. Ah, good night. O, pag na-release to, gabi naman eh. Kasi tagal mag-process si YouTube. So, good night. Bye-bye. Love you.